Hey everyone and welcome back to Outta Here Baseball. In this video we'll be looking at the stories behind some of the most famous nicknames in baseball. This video comes at the request of one of our subscribers, M.A. Burger. So thank you for the suggestion and remember if you have a video suggestion to leave it in the comment section and it could very well be a future video topic. Before we get started, remember that these are the stories behind various nicknames with interesting backstories, not necessarily the most iconic nicknames. So no Mr. Cub or Mr. October here. With that said, let's get right into the list. First up is Sparky Anderson. The longtime manager of the Reds and Tigers had a brief playing career of his own, where as a minor leaguer in the 50s with the Fort Worth Cats, an announcer called him Sparky due to his feisty nature. Next is Cool Papa Bell. Negro League superstar Cool Papa Bell is best remembered for his incredible sprint speed, but he began as a pitcher and after striking out another star player and Oscar Charleston, was nicknamed Cool. His manager later added Papa to make the name sound better. Continuing in alphabetical order, we have Yogi Berra. Berra's real name was Lawrence and received the Yogi name from teammate and friend Jack McGuire, who said that Berra looked like a Yogi or one who practices yoga whenever he waited to take his turn at bat. Next up, we have Oil Can Boyd. The former Red Sox pitcher opened up about the true origins of his nickname after his career ended, saying that he would get whiskey for his mom from a lady up the street. He was caught drinking some from an oil can as a kid, so his friend called him Oil Can and the name stuck. Now for one of the most iconic names in recent years, it's Coco Crisp. As a kid, Crisp's sister said her brother looked like a character on the Coco Crispy box. Later in the minor leagues, Crisp listed Coco as a nickname of his on a questionnaire, and in 2013, he legally changed his name to Coco Crisp. Next on the list is Kai Kai Kyler. Born Hazen Kyler, he would typically go by the name Kai on the ball field. When a ball was hit to him in the outfield while playing for Nashville in the minor leagues, the shortstop would call out Kai, followed by the second baseman echoing the name. Nashville fans liked the sound of Kai Kai, and thus the nickname was born. Moving on now to Chili Davis. The first Jamaican born player in the majors, Davis received his nickname after his dad gave him a poor haircut the kid said looked like someone put a chili bowl on his head and cut around it. Next is Goose Goslin. The Hall of Famer Goslin was best known for his hitting ability in the 20s with the Senators, but his poor defense is what garnered his nickname. Teammates said that when he attempted to run down fly balls, his arms waved around like a goose flapping its wings. Moving on, we have Mike Hargrove, and I'll just pass this one off real quick. They call Hargrove the human rain delay because of the way he goes through all sorts of gyrations, not only before setting up in the box prior to the first pitch, but in between pitches. He had an at-bat recently against Jim Palmer that was timed at 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Next on our list is Catfish Hunter. The first modern MLB free agent was nicknamed Catfish after he came home one day as a kid with a giant catfish he caught. Just kidding. Athletics owner Charles Finley wanted a flashy nickname for his young pitcher and came up with Catfish in 1965. The fake backstory began circulating later. Next is Shoeless Joe Jackson. This one is pretty straightforward, as Jackson took off his new cleats that were giving him blisters during a game in his teenage years. He proceeded to play without shoes for the game, and the resulting nickname stuck for life. Moving on now to Chipper Jones. Larry Wayne Jones Jr. was seen as a chip off the old block in relation to his father, hence his name, Chipper. Next up, Spider Jorgensen. We mentioned this name in a previous video, and if you think it should be pronounced Jorgensen, I'm just pronouncing it how it was in the movie 42. But Spider got his name from a pair of black gym shorts with an orange stripe that he wore in school that a teacher said reminded him of a black widow. Next, we have the crime dog, Fred McGriff. This one is credited to iconic broadcaster Chris Berman, who gave the name after McGruff, the crime dog. We move on to another power hitter in David Ortiz. The name Big Poppy also comes from a broadcaster, this time Jeremy Remy of the Red Sox. Ortiz had a habit of calling people, especially those whose names he couldn't remember, Poppy. Now on to a Negro League legend in Satchel Page. There are varying reports on the origin of this name, but the most common one is that as a boy, Page would work at the train station carrying bags. He made a contraption that allowed him to carry multiple bags at once, with an onlooker calling him a walking satchel tree. We move on to a teammate of Page's, Ted Ratcliffe. His nickname Double Duty came in the 1932 Negro League World Series, when he was the catcher for Satchel Page shutout in Game 1, and then pitched a shutout himself 
and Game 2. Next is Pee Wee Reese of the Dodgers. While most would think Reese's small stature garnered this nickname, it actually came from his skill with marbles as a kid, where a Pee Wee was the name for a small marble. Nearing the end of our list now, and we have Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose. So there are two different stories with this one. The first being in spring training 1963, when Rose sprinted to first base after a walk against the Yankees, prompting Whitey Ford to call him Charlie Hustle, though it was not to be taken as a compliment. Mickey Mantle recalled a similar story in which Rose climbed the outfield fence to catch a home run ball he had no chance at, with teammate Ford again referring to Rose as Charlie Hustle. Next up, the legend himself, Babe Ruth. Ruth has a plethora of nicknames, but where did the name Babe come from? Well, after being offered his first professional contract by the Baltimore Orioles at age 19, he needed a legal guardian to sign for him. So Orioles owner Jack Dunn became Ruth's legal guardian, leading teammates to call Ruth Dunn's new babe. Next is former Pirate star Pi Trainer. The gist of this story is that as a kid, Trainer would go to a corner store after games with his teammates, where the son of the owner would umpire the kids' games. Trainer would always ask for a slice of pie, which led to the nickname Pie Face, and later, simply Pie. We have two more pirate stars and brothers Paul and Lloyd Wayner. The outfield brothers are both enshrined in Cooperstown and were known as Big Poison and Little Poison, respectively. The story goes that at a game in Brooklyn, a fan dubbed them Big Person and Little Person, though in a Brooklyn accent, Person sounded like Poison. We end now with one of the best pitchers ever, Cy Young. The namesake for the award for best pitcher, Young would destroy fences at fields with his lively fastball, which led scouts and reporters to say that it looked like a cyclone had torn up the place. The name Cyclone was then shortened to Cy. So that concludes our list of baseball nicknames and their stories. Did we leave anyone out? Who do you think had the most interesting backstory? Leave your answer in the comments below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell icon to stay notified on all the latest Out of Here Baseball content. Thanks for watching.